I mean, when you're working with teams and there's a strong desire, in some cases I assume, to improve their performance, their outcomes. In other cases, maybe they're not aware, but you're in this situation where you're trying to help them attain better outcomes or outputs. Can you tell me like, where's the best place to start? The answer to that is often surprising to our clients and surprising to the practitioners who we train. So often when practitioners go in, they watch a team working and what they immediately attune to is things like trust and respect and the really juicy interpersonal dynamic stuff. And often that's what the client is noticing too, that there seems to be this relational piece that's going on and they think, let's cut right to the heart of it. It's really trust that's causing all of our issues. We need to work at trust and go at that. We used to do that more, but we have found that there's good reason to pull back. And then often the most effective place to start is actually a task. Rather than going into relationship, looking at more of the tactical work that the team needs to do. So getting their meetings to be effective, getting a sense of role definition, decision-making protocols. Because we find when they can do that, they can get some points on the board. So they can finally make that decision that they've been trying to make for sometimes months. They can actually get to the end of a meeting and have things accomplished. And that starts to improve morale, starts to improve trust. When you're working at getting things done and people are delivering more, that trust is going to go up. So it's a different relationship from what people think. You know, we don't have to go at trust first to improve the outcomes. If you can improve the outcomes, you're going to get better trust. And then some of those issues go away, and there's still going to be often some that are left, but those are the ones that you work with. So essentially, yeah. it sounds like what you're saying is the team has a purpose. If that purpose is to achieve some kind of outcome or a goal, let's actually help them get that done. Let them feel like a winning team. Yeah. And then once they get into that groove, you create a virtuous cycle. Does that sound right? Absolutely. So it achieves multiple outcomes. And often the organization's really happy because they're not just becoming a happier, more trusting team. They've actually gotten some work done. So can we think of a good example to help us really connect with this? So what's an outcome that you've been able to take a semi or dysfunctional team? It's obviously a tough place to start and get that team to actually perform in one fell swoop. Can we think of a good example to help us understand that point? All right, so I think a great example of focusing on task prior to relationship actually has to do with a client of ours. They're the senior leadership team, they were at the time, the senior leadership team of a large government contractor. And this team of six was struggling with basic team effectiveness, performance, and cohesion. They couldn't quite get their act together and they knew it. So when we started to work with them, their idea was that they should go off site and do some form of trust building or cohesion building exercises, typically in the team building or team training realm. And our suggestion was maybe instead of doing that, what if they did some work together? What if they collectively tried to get some output and some deliverables? And what they realized in that suggestion was that a lot of their meetings were not about working together. It was about listening to each other about working together. And so what they did after we suggested that is they took the three-year strategic planning process which was done in silos led by the CEO, and they brought it into the workroom to work together as a collective work product. And by doing that, what they had to do is actually work through the strategy, negotiate the different parameters, do the resource balancing, figure out which goals were going to apply to whom, and there was a lot of negotiation and compromise going on. And that negotiation and compromise led them to have to listen to each other, communicate in different ways, and really learn how to give and take. That did more for building trust than what we believe is any kind of off-site team building, trust building exercise. So Alex, that seems like a pretty miraculous outcome. Right. What, what is it that you did exactly that, that allowed the team to go from a state of ill performance to a state of, let's call it high performance, in one, in one go? So first, I'm not sure it was ill performance. I think it's just, they, they were doing okay, but they could do much better and they could do great. The, the, the job that we did really lives in this, this domain of team coaching versus perhaps facilitation or team building or team training. And our job was, as they came together and attempted this really for the first time, 
they, they stumbled upon their own behaviors. So they were interrupting each other, they weren't listening, they weren't asking questions. There was some jostling, some positioning. And our job was to, every once in a while, stop the action and have them notice what was going on. That noticing was very new for them because they had to stop and assess and actually label what they were observing. Then we would say, what do you want to do about it? And not surprisingly, because these are very experienced professionals, they had solutions. We should listen to each other. We should go one by one. We should use a method. We should try this. And then the next question was, so what do you want to do? And they would implement those. And our job was to keep doing that and every once in a while giving them some data and observations on behaviors we saw so they could use some of our data so that over the course of these half days that they set out, they little by little through self-observation became very aware and then put in place the modifications they needed for themselves. So the key there is not to do it for them, but to have them notice as they're doing work what's going on. And it's a very powerful format to create sustainable change.